Peace, family. Peace. Let me move my Buddha mic closer. Buddha mic closer. We got a powerful show for y'all tonight. I see King Simon in the building. King Simon said the show will start momentarily. Yes, thank you for telling everybody, King Simon. I am usually, I'm casually late, everybody. I'm what you would call casually late uh, every night, about five to ten minutes. Listen, family, I got a great show tonight. Um, got an amazing guest. It's not her first time on here. If you were, if you're an old listener of the program, let's say 2017, you know the sister came on the show before. But if you're a new listener, last two years post COVID, you may have never seen her on the channel. So uh, shout out to everybody, old and new listeners. I want to take this time to welcome Kanja Queen to the platform. Thank you, peace family. It's definitely a pleasure being back here again. Oh man, it's been a long time. Like I said, 2017, you was on here. What have you been up to since then? What's going on with Conjure Queen and her life recently, last couple man, of years? Man, um, well, I've been up to a lot, actually. Uh, I've been living in Mexico, and I've been learning about the magic over there, the occultism. Oh. Like I've just been on my spiritual nomad flow travel into different countries and learning about learning about the different spiritual systems in each different country. And it's so amazing how all of these different spiritual systems all around the world are very, very similar. And I think that if we were able to just kind of put our differences to the side and mm. realize that there's more commonalities than differences, we wouldn't be like debating and arguing so much because actually the shit is really all the same. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And, and you know that, Conjure Queen, I'm glad you said that because that's what this channel is all about. Everybody adds something to this, uh, to, to the puzzle and um, everybody got like a different spin on things. And I appreciate everybody's different way of going about uh, uh, gaining knowledge or, or, or raising their vibration. Mm -hmm. And I'm not for the bickering and arguing and uh, ain't nothing wrong with a healthy debate, but to get upset, like I know people that are upset and hate somebody just because they do something a different way. And that's not what this consciousness was supposed to be about. So I'm glad we're going to have this conversation tonight. Uh, yeah, the people definitely in the chat, we almost had a thousand people. So y'all ready. Yeah. Y'all definitely ready. And can, I just, can, I yeah, say, I'm sorry, can I just Please. say something before we start? Like, I think Please. that it's really interesting that how everything comes around full circle. Like I actually found out about Bobby Hemet through you. And Bobby oh, yeah. Hemet has been one of my biggest influences, like when I first started getting into the occult, because he was the only melanated brother I knew that was talking about black magic and talking about mm -hmm. the stuff that everybody else is scared of. So I always was like, yo, it would be so cool to be up there. And then here I am today. So I just think that it's amazing how I like how everything just manifested. So thank you for creating this platform. Thank you for just putting everybody <laughs> together to do this. Like, this is amazing. This is an amazing platform that you have. Indeed. A uh, big shout out to my brother, Bobby Hammett. Yeah. I, cool, I was real cool with that brother. Real good down to earth brother. Brother taught me a lot, you know, mm -hmm. on the camera and off the camera. And shout out to the soul of the avatar that we call Bobby Hammett. That soul will live on eternally and forever. Ashe. And uh, yeah, I say and, and, and not, don't don't ask me, did Bobby pass away? No, I, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that what I'm, I'm giving his soul props because his soul came down here to do to fulfill a mission. Mm -hmm. And Bobby, like Kanji Queen said, we were so scared of the occult and what and black magic and all, man. We was fighting like I remember one time my uncle walked in Kanji Queen to see me watching Bobby. I mean, he jumped up. That nigga was like, what are you doing? He was like, no, stay away from that stuff. Stay away from that stuff. But well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kanji Queen to start out with. This this word black magic. Now we know the Christians may be thrown off on it, uh, off this word because of the Bible and because of Christianity and mm -hmm. because of the Vatican and because of the church. And we know what the I had this sister named Vicky Dillard on here did a wonderful job exposing the Vatican and how they stole the magic from the mm -hmm. sisters and and, and 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 hid it. The Sybils, I think, and hid it and disguise it and teach people um, rules that they don't even need to be following. But what I want to ask you is that. There's so many people within the spiritual community that they kind of look at me like, why you call yourself black magic, brother? Like they don't like the word black magic in the conscious new age spiritual community. They prefer light magic if there's a difference or something. But I want to start off by asking you, could you tell me the difference between light and black magic and why 
the spiritualists are like, don't fuck with that that word, the term, anything black magic, stay away from it. It's real scary Ooh. to a lot of individuals. Well, this is an interesting question because I always talk about this on my platform. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, when I first started to get into like the whole spirituality thing, I noticed that there wasn't a lot of like melanated sisters that was talking about like the occult magic, like the deep, heavy stuff that Bobby was talking about. Because I'm like, yo, a lot of my spiritual teachers were men. So I'm like, yo, where are all the spiritual women at? You feel me? Which actually inspired me to start my YouTube channel back in 2015. Now, to answer your question, right? I think that most people are afraid of black magic because of the indoctrination that has been implanted in our minds since we were children, right? Like even when you think about cartoons, like look at perfect example, Lion King, right? If you notice that the lighter skin or the lighter toned characters are always known as the good ones, right? And then mm -hmm. you'll look at the, the darker tone characters like Scar, like dark black mm -hmm. equals evil. And this theme plays out throughout different, different things, not just in cartoons and movies and all types of stuff. And I think that people feel comfortable with light magic, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that one man's devil is another man's God. And mm -hmm. that's something that Bobby Hammond actually taught me. Oh, he was mm -hmm. like, listen, we got to realize that the, the devils that they tell us to stay away from, how do we know that these are not the same gods or deities or energies that our ancestors work with? And then we got to also ask ourselves, what did our ancestors practice or study before they got colonized, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a mm -hmm. lot of, it's a lot of unprogramming and deprogramming that we have to do. Because when we think about like, shadow work right like, mm -hmm. like i always talk about like black magic shadow work like those are the things that are in the hidden the occult is hidden the mm -hmm. light is actually what i call is the illusion right like light magic is the illusion anything that hits the light it's already been altered and then when we think about the bible if we want to go back to like the christians that may be watching this the bible says you know in the beginning god said let there be light so before there was light what was there Darkness, darkness, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so I'm like, okay, so light actually came out of darkness. So the light is actually only a, what's the, what's the word? The light is only a fraction of the truth. The darkness is like the truth, primordial energy. And this is what the politicians are using. The leaders that control <laughs> the world, they deal with the dark magic. They deal with the primordial source power. So I think that Oh, so we, did we get disconnected? Um, no, I'm here. I'm here. I just put oh, you on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good. You good. <laughs> okay. So, so I think that what it is, is that we've been indoctrinated and conditioned to stay away from the dark and to look at the light because the darkness is where the real power is at. And then when you think about it, like, you know, when you look back at like the Illuminati videos and stuff like that, like that's how I've kind of got started into the occult. They always talk about like the OC and I is evil. Um, the pentagram is evil. And so I started looking into it. I'm like, wait a minute, this stuff is not evil. Like these are ancient symbols that we use to tap into certain levels of consciousness. You feel me? So to answer the question, to make it simple, I think the reason why there's more light workers than shadow workers is because people really just do things for trends. Like mm. people do what's popular. Like I, yeah, could easily, I, do, I could easily talk about the light and stuff like that because you know, my views and stuff will blow up. But then if yeah, I start yeah. talking about like the devil and I start talking about like shadow work and I start talking about like the dark nitty gray stuff, people not gonna like that. You feel mm. me? But yeah. surprisingly though, surprisingly though, Rich, when I did start talking more about like black magic, shadow work and stuff like that, a lot of people did gravitate towards that because I feel like it's not a lot, not enough people like you, like me talking about the truth, the scary stuff, the mm -hmm. ugly stuff. Nobody wants to do shadow work. Everybody just wants to focus on the pretty stuff and spirituality. But we all know when you do the work, this healing stuff is anything but pretty. <laughs> mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. Indeed. What um you know when when you watch when you start studying magic or anytime you see anything dealing with magic on television dark magic black magic 
you always see Latin. There's something about Latin <laughs> and dark magic or black magic. What's the connection? Like, is this something we uh, we as melanated beings, we need to go back to Latin? Because you always see Latin when it comes time to do some magic, Harry Potter, mm -hmm. whatever. You just always see Latin pop up. Well, you know what? I think that is very interesting because I started to study a little bit of Latin in different languages. And like... Um, I started to say like my chants and my prayers and affirmations in different languages. And I do feel that when you chant a spell or incantation in Latin, you do feel the vibration. Whoa. And I, and I believe strongly that wow. your words carry vibrations. And I strongly also believe that Latin came from the metal netter some way, somehow, because when you feel said that, feel said that. Phil Valentine said that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I don't like I said I don't know. These are just what I think from my research. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, okay, the Romans had used the the Latin, right? And mm -hmm. then where did the Romans get their language from? A lot of the Egyptians or the Kemites taught the Romans everything that they know. So when we look at that, honestly, I think that if you really want to tap into the true magic, you're not really going to get it with English because English is a you know a bastard or hybrid language. You got to go to the old dead languages to really mm. understand <clears throat> the culture, the spells and all of that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about um, with magic. I think one of the most important words, regardless of the semantics we use or anything, how we disguise it or the, 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 the clothes we wear or the mask we wear mm -hmm. or whatever rituals we do or the colors we wear. I think one of the most important things with magic is intention. So talk to me about how much intention is it, how important it is when it, when it's, when it comes to doing magic. Okay. Well, first of all, we got to understand that the universe is mind, all is mental. Right. And with that being said, like first, before you start to do something, you have to put it in your mind, what you want to do. Right. Like intention is all about thought. Mm -hmm. And your thoughts have to align with your actions in order for you to get results. And I think that's why when some people say, like, why are my spells are not working? Why are my rituals not creating any, any effect? It's mm -hmm. because something is not adding up. You can't do a spell to get a man, but then you never leave the house, right? Like, what is he going to do? Come to your door? No, you got to go out and find him. You can't do a spell for a whole bunch of money, but you're not creating a channel for that to come in. So your intention, your thought has to also add up with actions for you to get those results. Mm. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's something the beauty, what makes this game so beautiful, this game we call this game of life so beautiful is that you, I don't think you could teach intention. That's something a person has to figure out on their own. And they're constantly looking for somebody. How do I do this? But I can't really teach you how to tap into your attention. That's something you got to figure out on your own. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I think, I don't think that I can teach people intention, but what I do do is like, I do have classes and I do mentor people and I teach them how to get better results with their magic. And what I notice is that the shadow work is really about tapping into the subconscious mind to reprogram your mind so that you can believe that you can attract these things that mm, you want. Mm, because a mm. lot of the times people think that they want these things, but subconsciously they may not think that they're worthy of it. They may yeah, not think that thanks. they deserve it or that they can have it. So that's why we always stress like, okay, shadow work, dark magic, like magic is not just to, you know, it never was really created just to, get money and, you know, have, I don't know, be attractive, get a man, tie, tie somebody to you. It was really used to cultivate the soul. Magic was really a system to understand the higher principles of life. That's why they talk about high magic and low magic. High magic is when you're dealing with like the higher level frequencies and you're really trying to transform your life. These are people that's talking about um, dealing with like the Oasia spirits, what people call demons. But demons really come from daemon, which was really your spirit guide or the jinn or your genie. Um, side note, just thinking about it, like men, there's an old saying that everybody is born with a, a genie. Well, men are born with a genie and women are born with a Juno. And they say that your genie or your genius is what actually you tap into to tap into your artistic talents. And if everybody has it, but not everybody knows how to tap into it. And I mm. think that's why the church 
And a lot of religions kept us away from this mysticism because they don't want people to tap into their true genius and mm -hmm. activate their higher self. Because imagine if everybody tapped into their true higher self, like we would be unstoppable, especially mm -hmm. melanated people. Come on. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, you know, I, I never been in jail, but you hear jail stories and people will tell you all the time that uh, in jail, sometimes when, when dudes come into jail, they want to make an example out of the biggest dude in there, the biggest dude, the biggest, baddest dude in there. So people will know not to mess with them. So mm -hmm. they, some people might step to the biggest dude in the yard. So everybody else know, okay, now I'm the biggest, baddest, baddest dude in the yard. Okay. Do you think when we look at that and we put it into perspective with countries and nations, do you think that's why the U S stay fucking with Haiti because Haiti was the biggest baddest in the yard. So the U.S. is like, I'm going to keep my foot on Haiti so everybody else know the U.S. is the baddest motherfuckers out here. You I think, is, is that how that works? Hmm. That's a good question. I think that, well, there's a lot of power in Haiti. There's a lot of power even here in the Americas. You mm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, we, um, yeah. I think that the U.S. is a big bully anyway. And what we're seeing that's happening right now is karma because um, we're, in, we're currently in a seven year, right? Like 2023, add that up, that's seven. Mm -hmm. Now seven is a spiritual number and it's also revealing truths and it's also the number of karma. And that's mm -hmm. why we're seeing the nation fall. Like we're seeing mm -hmm. the medical system fall. We're seeing the judicial system fall, legal system fall, educational system, help all of that is mm -hmm. falling. And that's because look what America has been built upon or the United States rather has been built upon because America and the United States is different, right? Like, I hope people in here know that uh, the United States is really just a corporation, right? It's mm -hmm. a business. And what we're seeing now is the fall of that corporation. And honestly, there's going to be a big shift that's happening. You already see what they're doing with Fed now, right? Like, yeah. they're trying to change yeah. the economy. They're trying to make it paperless money, like a, a universal <laughs> currency. It's a lot of stuff happening. And I feel like those who are first will be last and those who are last will be first to me shall inherit the earth, right? Like all of these old sayings are starting to really make sense now. Revelations and all of that, um, I believe is like, was really foretelling what's happening right now. And mm -hmm. Haiti, I do feel like Haiti is going to make a comeback. A lot of these third world countries are going to really be shifting things um, because they're, they're actually more in tune with spirituality than we are here you know, in the Americas. Mm -hmm. So well, you said you traveled to Mexico earlier. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were in the book knowledge or internet knowledge, and that's how we get our, you know, our knowledge. What is there anything you learned in Mexico that we may not, may not be privy to because we're just stuck on the internet, stuck on YouTube? Like, <laughs> give me some of the sauce they got over there in Mexico. What's going on over there? Mm. Magic wise. I will tell you this. I feel as though certain places have more power and, yeah. and vibration. Like when I was living in Mexico, I feel like my manifestations, my power, my energy, my, my mind, like I was on a whole nother level. Like yeah. I was manifesting things very quickly. And I do feel like there's vortexes, a lot of pyramids and things like that in Mexico. And that was aiding mm -hmm. me in my spiritual journey, not to mention it also depends on, um, for those who may not know about, like, um, there's something called astrocartography. And everybody, the, everybody's astrocartography chart is different. So basically, an astrocartography map is something that lays out, like, um, the planets, where they were in the sky, and how they were hitting planet Earth. And so in certain places of the world, certain people will have better luck. Like, let's say... Um, mm. If I was to pull up your astrocartography, right, Rich, I can pull up like where you where you would be more successful in business, um, where your love life would actually really thrive, uh, where you will have more spiritual power, things like even like karmic things like that. So I feel and I always encourage people since I'm a spiritual nomad myself, people should travel the world and gain knowledge because there's certain things that you can't find on YouTube. There's certain things that you can't learn in a book. Right. It's certain things people can't teach you. and You have to actually go out and get it. And there's a really good book that talks about this. It's called um, The Essential Guide to the Left Hand Path. 
by Uncle Setnock. And he talks about like left hand magic, um, spirituality, all of the stuff that Rich talks about on his platform, what I talk about, um, the nitty gritty dark stuff that a lot of the love and lighters don't tell you about. <laughs> love and lighters. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're love and lighters, you know, like they're, they're light it. workers and then they're shadow workers. There's a oh, people man. That go the dark and they help you, they help cultivate you while you're going through those ugly dark nights of the soul so that they can help bring you back into the light. You get me? Mm. So it's a cycle. You go into the dark, you get the knowledge, and you bring it forth into the light, and you share it with other people. And that's what people like you and I do. We bring it. We, you know, like me and Rich, like a lot of a lot of people who've done the work. Like it's a lot of stuff that we've been through. Like it's not pretty being an influencer. It's a lot of work, a lot of study, <clears throat> a lot of classes, a lot of a lot of things that we put into this knowledge. Like we didn't just stumble upon this. This is years of studying. Yeah, I remember one time, this was years ago, I had to be like 26 or something like that. And things just wasn't, it, things what didn't seem to be working for me the way I thought they were when I got into the knowledge and information. And I told myself, one day I told myself, I was like, damn, I'm going to throw out all my books. This shit ain't worth it. And I contemplated that for a second. I was like, yeah, I'm going to just throw out the books because this shit, I'm watching everybody else around me have um just... They, they, they're happy with their regular jobs and they're doing this and, and they're not into this and they seem to be uh, thriving more than I am. And I contemplated for, so of course I didn't do that. But like you said, it, it could get, it's not the prettiest thing in the world and it could get, it, it could get really get to you. And people don't realize that they may see somebody like me and you and they don't know what the journey entails. And this is why we tell people, be prepared when you want to open your third eye, when you want to engage in this, oh, because yeah. your whole, your whole world is going to shift your whole world. Yep. You will lose friends. You will yeah. be like your family may turn away from you. Like this is a, you know, this is not a popular path. Like be prepared to be lonely. Sometimes be prepared to go <clears throat> and see a hermit cave, you know, and sometimes like the knowledge, sometimes the truth is not going to be popular. Like if you want to be an influencer, if you want to be a cultist, if you're doing this for clout, for trends, it's like, are you really doing the work? Because when you read the Kabbalion, they talk about like, this is a path that not many people will follow. Don't do this for a whole bunch of followers. Like I didn't start my YouTube channel for followers and clout. Like I did this as my spiritual, it was literally like my online diary. And I was just talking about everything I was going through because I was losing friends, because my family didn't understand. My family is Christian. I grew up with Christian people going into church all the time. So who was I going to talk to about this? I didn't know who to talk to. And that's when I found your channel, learned about Bobby Hammett, Brother Panic. And so I'm like, okay, this is my tribe. Indeed. You know, we, we talk a lot about the Vatican and they played a, a big role in convincing us that magic was evil and convincing us to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Just through personal experience of me observing the world, very observant, very analytical. I'm a Virgo. So I analyze like absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes way too much. Like sometimes I analyze things way too much, but this is how I come up with my questions. But anyway, um, I noticed, th mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. I noticed one of the biggest things, like I seen people who were great at doing magic, great at putting out powerful intentions, great at doing this, great at doing that. But the thing that prevented them from excelling or the thing that stopped, put a stop to their magic was they mate. They mate. The person they decided to lay down with put a stop to all that shit, either directly, consciously, or subconsciously. So, and I see, I, I notice a lot of sisters, I'm observing, powerful mm -hmm. sisters, magicians. Then I see the dude she get with, and I'm like, oh shit, that's a rap for her. And it was, it's a rap for her after. I know, I'm, I'm observing this shit. I'm watching it like from a third person experience. Talk to me about how important your mate is. Cause if you this empath, you the spiritualist, you this magician, you get with this mate, they could make or break you. I do believe that. I do believe that um, your partner can either build you up or they can destroy you. And honestly, like I said, again, like this path can be lonely because you got to realize that we're a minority within a minority. Right. Yeah. Like it's not it's not going to be a lot of people that are into like learning about knowledge of self, elevating themselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, all of these levels. So, yeah, like. I think that the law of attraction, right? Uh, we don't attract people by accident. No, I take that back. We can attract all types of people, but it's always up to you who you allow in your space, who you allow in your reality. And I think that 
the people that we attract is also similar to our energy. So let's say if you're looking at a, a goddess, you know, and you say, okay, why is this, this beautiful, spiritual, powerful, magical goddess with this brother over here, right? Well, sometimes, you know, sometimes looks are deceiving because I don't necessarily believe that, and I've put up a video about this, and some people may disagree with me in the comments, and that's okay, mm -hmm. but... Not just because you're a spiritual person doesn't mean that the person that you attract is going to be on the same exact journey as no, you. Thanks. You thanks. might actually need somebody a little bit different. Like it could be a spiritual sister with a hood dude, and they may actually work better than two magicians together. Because I have, you know, my no. girl is hood. My girl is hood. So I know exactly what you're See, talking about. You my know girl what I'm is, saying, yeah, yeah. right? Because yeah. like at the end of the day, we both <clears throat> from New York, right? Like, right, and I yeah. feel like New York people, we we have a little edge to us. Yes. And I you feel do. like I need a dude that has a little edge to him. It's like, yeah, you know, you could be spiritual and conscious, but I noticed like when I was, you know, active in certain um events and going to the debates and and going to these like conscious lectures and events. A lot of the men are very feminine, you know. Like, oh, they're, they're oh, oh man, go ahead. talk your talk. Go ahead, talk your talk. <laughs> I'm not saying all of them, okay. And I'm mm. just saying this because my Mars is in Aries. Like I'm a, um, I'm an Aries Martian. So basically, mm. they say that a woman, when you look at your astrological chart, when you look at a woman's chart, her Mars sign tells what type of man that she's into or her ideal mate. And a man's chart, you know, you'll look at his Venus sign to see what type of a woman that he's into, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, because my Mars is in Aries, I need my man to have a little fire to him, right? And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes a lot of these spiritual guys, um, I don't know if it's just kind of, you know, they're they're pandering. Is that the word? Pandering? Mm, that's interesting. A lot. But I mm -hmm. think because my third eye is open, I can see through that. And I you feel like it. a lot of them. You know, I never heard a sister say that, yo. I noticed that shit. I don't say that. I, I never heard a sister say, I noticed the dude is pandering. They'd be like, oh, he's so nice. I'd be like, man, this nigga full of shit. Yo, full you of know shit. what I'm saying? Like, I, I never heard a sister say that. Okay. <laughs> you tapped in. You tapped in. Okay. I, I can read through that bullshit. Oh, shit. Red. I never heard like, a sister say that. It. So much, so many of them stepped up to me with that fake hotep, fotep. Oh, That's shit. what I call them, foteps. Because it's like, yo, you're not really about that life. You know what I'm saying? And you could just, when you really do the work, you can tell who's really about it and who's not. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe, like, like I said, you don't always have to go with somebody who has a certain look or image, like who who claims himself spiritual, who has aunts and head wraps. Like that don't mean that they're about this life. You can find somebody who's very tapped in, very intellectual, very spiritual that might be in the hood, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. okay. No, definitely, definitely, I agree a, a thousand percent with that, man. This is a great <laughs> conversation. What I want, where I want to take it now, is I want to talk to you about um, since we're kind of talking about, uh, you know people in relationships i want to talk about mm -hmm. the law of attraction and voodoo and and well not voodoo on uh, magic voodoo and magic or whatever but mm -hmm. how does you know when people you, we used to hear about love spells and i remember when i was young i used to always hear about women putting love spells on men and things of that nature how do you or, or even mm -hmm. harming people i remember people talking about the little voodoo dolls and sticking pins in and harming people i want to know how is voodoo effective when we live in a holographic universe where everybody creates their own reality so if I create my own reality and somebody's trying to do voodoo or magic, how is it your voodoo going to be successful if I'm the creator of my own reality? And I'm not talking about me per se. I'm just using an example. No, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. That's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is this is what I have come up with, especially like reading. It's a really good book called, um, what is it? Psychic Self-Defense by Dion Fortune. And I think Bobby Hammond even recommended yes, this book. Yes, he did. Excellent yeah. book. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. She talks about this. She says that when somebody is doing some type of a spiritual attack to you, right? Like if somebody is trying to tap into your energy or send something to you, they can't hurt you without your consent. So the way that it works is it's kind of like... Um, Sublim like they're throwing subliminals at you. It's kind of like hypnotism with somebody mm. kind of planting the seed. And 
let's say, for instance, like uh, if somebody wants to do controlling magic, right? They mm. say that you'll work between the hours of like uh, 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. because this is the time when a person is usually asleep. And nighttime is also the time where people's willpower is the lowest. That is why they have infomercials around like, you know, two in the morning, three in the morning, mm. because you're more inclined to buy things because your willpower is so weak. I right. learned this in advertising school. Like, <laughs> you told us that. Like, it's manipulative. Mm. But I think, I think that it really depends. Like, if a person has strong willpower, it's going to be more difficult to attack them or more difficult to tie them. When I say tie, it's like a love tie. For people that may not know what that means, like to bind a person to you. Um, and even though it's a lot of people that do it, you know, they might have to have a link from the person, like a piece of hair, um, blood, uh, something that a person touched. Like they may need a link um, in order to have more <laughs> of a powerful effect. So the reason why magic, why love spells work on some people and not others, a person who has an idle mind or a person who has nothing going on, a person who has a very weak will is more easily um, susceptible to black magic or mm. to um, control. And I don't want to use black magic because that's like considered like bad, but it, mm. I don't believe in bad and good. I think that um, if that person gets affected with the witchcraft, then it was meant to happen because what's not meant to happen is not going to happen. And maybe that's part of that person's karma. Mm -hmm, indeed. Yo, yo, hollow, you funny. Hollow said the spaghetti sauce. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why that's funny. Yo, the last, the last little argument I got it with my girl, she made some spaghetti the next day. In my mind, I said, this bitch trying to do voodoo on me. Oh no, she was making sure you wasn't leaving, Rick. Yo, yo, hollow, hollow, don't say that. Don't say that, hollow. Oh man, yo, hollow, Vegeta. Yo, shout out to Vegeta, man. Yeah, that, that's the comedy. spaghetti sauce is infamous. <laughs> Oh man, it's true, it's true. That's like a southern thing, and they, I think, in like the the West Indies, they got like sweat rice, where the girl like squats over the rice and feeds it to her man. It's crazy. It's a whole bunch of ways. And listen, ladies, men do it too because they be doing putting their little magic sauce in the Alfredo. Okay, the Alfredo <laughs> sauce. Don't eat the Alfredo sauce. Let's talk about. Um, I was looking at your Instagram. You got an interesting Instagram. Tell the people your Instagram so they can follow you. Oh, yes. My Instagram is at I am Conjure Queen. Same thing as my uh, YouTube. Okay. Handle. I am Conjure Queen. Make sure y'all follow the queen. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about you was like burning ancestor money. And people hear about ancestor money. And some people like, why the hell would you buy or burn fake what they call fake money? So what's the deal? What's the science behind burning ancestor money? I seen you clapping your hands and all of that. I want to know mm -hmm. what's the deal with all of that. Talk to me about that. Okay, so ancestor money, a lot of people, a lot of people have debates about it because they feel like, oh, you know, it's an Asian guy, it's an Asian man um, on the image of this bill, you shouldn't burn it. This is what I think. I think that sometimes we get so caught up in racism and the physicality of things, we forget that we're spiritual beings. We right. forget that these spirits or these entities don't really have a physical face. They're not black, they're not white, they're not yellow, they're not green, like they're just energy. And I work with all different types of deities and the, the <clears throat> deity that's on most of the ancestor money um, is the Jade Emperor. And supposedly mm -hmm. he is the God or the deity that reigns over like spiritual spirituality, also like the mortals, the dead, um, and wealth. So when you burn an ancestor money, what you're doing is you're kind of paying off your ancestral um, karmic debts. Okay. Uh, and you could have had ancestors who probably, you know, murdered themselves or suicide, you know, off themselves or killed somebody or probably died in depression probably got murdered. So you want to pay off their karma debt so that way they can be healed. And when you heal your ancestors, you also heal yourself. So that's why we burn ancestor money to open up the way for communication to our ancestors. Um, and I even have, um, I even teach all of this, like how to work with your ancestors, because I'm a necromancer. Like I talk to the dead, I work with the dead. Um, they aid me. I do my rituals with the dead, the mortals. Um, I have a class teaching people like how to tap into your ancestors, how to burn ancestor money to communicate with them, learning about necromancy. Um, and honestly, I feel like 
people skip the ancestors. You know, people like to mm. just go straight to like the Orisha, or straight to like the Lua, the Neturu and stuff. But it's like your ancestors are your first line of defense. Your ancestors are the ones that's going to put you on to other spirits in the spiritual realm. Because before you, when you first step into the spiritual realm, nobody knows you. You're a nobody. You got to make an image and a name for yourself. And the way that you do that is by establishing some type of a, a image or a reputation with your ancestors. And the spirits are seeing like, oh, look how good that he or she takes care of their ancestors. I want some of that. And then deities and spirits will start to introduce themselves to you because they see how well you take care of your spirits and yourself. Mm -hmm. What's the science of the, the clapping the hands? We know in church when they sing and they clap the hands oh. at, at, at um you know at arenas, we clap hands for somebody when they walk on stage. Mm. What's what's the magic behind the hand clap? It gotta be something behind it. Come on. So we gotta look at the hands. Like the hands yeah. have a whole bunch of meridians and chakras in the hands. Most people just know that we have seven chakras, the main chakras in our body, but there's several mm. chakras in our hands. Um, and so when we're clapping the hands, not only is clapping is, is dispersing of energy, it's also used to like get rid of bad spirits, negative energy, like stagnant energy, and it also raises the vibration. So that's why they tell you, like, let's say if you have to stand up in front of a crowd and you have to do a lecture or a presentation, the first thing that you do to get the energy up is you be like, Everybody, thank you for coming. Give a round of applause for yourself for being here. Mm. So not, you know, subconsciously what you're doing is you're raising the vibration and not everybody's in tune with you. So that's mm. a tip for anybody in here who has to do a public um, presentation or whatever. Do that first and it raises the vibration before you even open your mouth to do your, your lecture or whatever. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In, in terms of finances, how effective has what you've been doing magically been? Because everybody, you know, money, everybody, you know, talk about ways to get money. How do you use spirituality? Well, everybody don't talk about it, but people are very interested in using spirituality to increase their income so they can better take care of their family or whoever they, whatever they're doing. So mm -hmm. how successful has magic and spirituality been in terms of you, your finances in your life? So finances <clears throat> is a very interesting thing when it comes to like the occult and spirituality. I noticed that whenever I focus too much on money, my ancestors will slow my money down because they're like, this is not what it's about. Like, this is about mm. the spiritual journey. Don't get distracted. Like, stay mm. on your path. And if I ever go off track from, like, the occult, spirituality, like, knowledge of self, it's like, they won't let me do anything else. Like, they'll block mm -hmm. all other avenues. They're mm -hmm. like, no, you're not doing this. This is what you're doing. You're going to do this right here. I think that... It's not more so like, um, I think I read a book that said something interesting. I'll never forget. It said, you know, most people do rituals for money, but the wise man does a ritual for wisdom. Because if you have wisdom, you won't need to do any more money rituals. You'll know mm. how to make the money. And so ever since I read that, I'm like, yo, okay. So really, I feel like when you start really tapping into the spiritual journey and tapping into your ancestors and spirits, like they'll create they'll create ways where money will come to you. People will want to donate to you, help you, offer to pay your bills, buy you food, like take you on dates, whatever. But I think it's more so just about like trusting, trusting the process, especially in the spiritual path. I think the more trusting and open you are, the more the universe just pours into you. And the more that you give to people, I feel like um, the more I give, the more I share, the more generous I am with others, I feel like the universe pours back into me. Because it's a it's a abundance mindset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I agree right. with that. I know. No, no, definitely, definitely. I'll I, 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 I be going all over the place, Rachel. No, it's, no, it's, it's all good. It's <laughs> all good. We 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 flowing tonight. The flow is good. I, I love I love the flow. I love the mm -hmm. flow. And, and you know, I, I noticed that too in terms of of giving and how much that affects your money, and it actually helps your money because it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people, uh, Conjure Queen, that they do all this, they talk, they read a lot of books about abundance, but when it's time to buy something in the store and they see this water and they see another water and they like, oh shit, well, this is $2 more. I ain't getting that shit. I'm saving, right? <laughs> They're like, hell no, I ain't spending two more dollars on that water. Nigga, you oh, must be crazy. Nice. And it's like, you might save $2 that day, but in a bigger scheme of things, 
the vibration. Mm-hmm. You didn't save two dollars with that vibration. You lost more than two dollars with that vibration. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I agree. I agree a thousand percent. With, um, I think with- that I think you know to add on to what you just said. I think that it's all about mindset once again. Like mm-hmm. everything always goes back to the mind. The universe is meant to all is mine. I think that sometimes people have like a a lack mindset or a poverty mindset. And I think when you have a Mm -hmm. mindset like that, like the universe blocks you. Cause I think of money is like money is currency. It's energy. It's like water and it flows and it has to flow. And what happens when water is stagnant, right? Like it gets dirty, like all types Mm -hmm. of stuff settles in it, mosquitoes, bugs, all of that. So think of your money kind of being like that. When you just have your money sitting and you're just storing it and you're not really doing nothing with it, it's not going to grow. It's not flowing. The money has to flow. The currency energy has to flow. Mm, Indeed. You, I heard you mention on your YouTube, the birth certificate, and how 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 that's magic. How when we come into this realm, we incarnate. Our parents got to sign off that birth certificate, and how that binds us further deep in the matrix. And I know the Moors talk about. You know, I don't want to get too much into that because that could be that's a whole another rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Whether you should get rid of, but talk to me about what's your thoughts on the birth certificate? Should people should people get one? Do you think it, it makes us slaves in this realm? Is it magical? What, what's your thoughts on the birth certificate? Uh, well, I did mention it briefly in probably one of my videos. I don't go too much in depth with the birth certificate. I think there's plenty of other YouTubers who probably tell you like other options that you can get besides the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do feel that your birth certificate is kind of like your barcode, um, not barcode, your social security is your barcode. Your birth certificate is kind of like um, you signing your life to the government, basically saying that your life or your physical, your straw man um, is collateral for the United States to use. Um, yeah. So to be honest, like that's not my, uh, what's it? Forte. <laughs> So that's yeah. the most information I have on that. Mm-hmm. Got a question about astrology. We mentioned astrology several times earlier. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talked about, I heard you in your video talk about how, you know, uh, they make rules for us to follow when there are no rules to this shit. So in terms, and on a, on a bigger scheme of things, they make man-made laws down here for us to follow mm-hmm. uh, to keep us controlled. On a higher level, do you think the gods or the lesser gods made astrological rules for the Titans to follow mm. to keep us constrained? And when I say that, I mean astrology. So with astrology, we're, we're taught that we, we got to do this. So we're supposed to, we're going to be this way. We're going to be that way. And, you know, Mercury retrograde comes around and everybody gets scared and everybody starts scurrying. Do you think Mercury was made by the lesser gods to keep the Titans in check? That's what I'm trying to say. That's a really good question. Um, I don't, you know what? I don't think that Mercury was created to keep the, you said the Titans or the lower? Uh, well, the, 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 let's say, let's say the, Olymp- the Olympians or the lesser gods, did they create okay. astrology? So when the t- Titans incarnate in this realm, because they mm-hmm. say we got the, um, the dust of the Titans, mm-hmm. that's a way to keep us in check because we're always studying mm-hmm. astrology, knowing, but there might, but there may not be no rules on another level. Okay, so from what I know, or what I, from my understanding, not what I know, Mm -hmm. from my understanding, I think that in this matrix, when we incarnate into this physical realm, we we have to abide by certain laws, the laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. And these laws are dictated by planetary movements. Like, for instance, we have to respect the law of gravity. However, there are ways to not break the law of gravity, but bend it, as some people can levitate. Right. Mm, Some mm. people can walk through walls like we always hear about stuff like that, especially like in like the West Indies, um, Africa, places like that. Like we hear about people transforming themselves into birds and all types of things that sound impossible. Mm. Um, I believe that these planetary or heavenly spheres or the gods, uh, astrology, they say, was the first original uh, religion or spiritual uh, practice. And our ancestors worked with these heavenly bodies instead of against it. Um, And I feel as though when you are in harmony with the cosmos, in harmony with these astrological bodies or um, heavenly bodies, 
you are also moving in sync with the universe. You are in, in sync with nature, the nectar, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, however, we, we read for those who are fans of like mythology, um, in, in school, they taught us like Greek mythology, that whenever the hero went against the gods, it was like, you know, all hell would break loose. Uh, it was a movie about that, Clash of the Titans, you mm -hmm. know, and he was like, I want to have my own destiny. I'm going to go against the gods. So mm -hmm. I think what all of these mythical stories is basically saying is that, yes, man has a choice to go against the gods, but understand that his path will be very difficult. But if mm -hmm. he goes in alignment with his path or his astrological um, chart, then he will have a more easy or not easy, but a more smooth, harmonious life. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, indeed. I, but but there is a <clears throat> there is a debate, though, in a in the YouTube community about the moon actually being not real and created. And I did do a video about that because I'm not even sure. And it's crazy mm. because I'm like, I work with the moon. I'm a bruja. Like, you know, I'm a cancer. So I'm like, if the moon is not real and the moon doesn't exist, and if the moon was created by so-called, so quote-unquote, reptilians, um, you know, that would just throw off everything. Like, how do you explain the tides? How do you explain, like, our moods? How do you explain anything? I don't right. know. Right, it's, right. It's, it's crazy when you, when it, sometimes it's too much information, Rich, on internet. Yeah. That's why yeah. I go, unplug. I'll be like, you know what? No, let me get off this internet because they're going to start telling us, like, none of this shit is real. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's when uh, early in the convo, like I said, the main ingredient with with magic is intention. Mm -hmm. Because I hear I've had a lot of people on the program say that the moon is fake, and maybe it is. I'm not sure, but I've done so much magic personally that have worked with the moon. So whether it's mm -hmm. fake or not, shit, that vegan burger niggas eat is fake, or collard greens is fake, or the okra is fake. But it, it helps heal us because it has mm -hmm. some a molecular structure that we agree to that 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 we consider healthy. So I've, in my reality, I look at it like this, Conjure Cream. In my reality, I've agreed. It's about agreements. Mm -hmm. I agreed that the moon, I could do magic with the moon, so I could do magic with the moon. In somebody mm -hmm. else's reality, they may have an agreement that the moon is fake and it don't work, so it may not work for them. You know what I'm saying? I believe yeah. that. And like I said, once again, it goes back to the mind. Like you mind, yeah. what you believe is uh -huh. what it's going to be. If you believe that, you know, you, 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 you're a piece of shit, life is shit, like, you know, you're being oppressed by the white man and that if you believe all of that, then that's going to be real. But I honestly feel like, you know, when are you going to start taking control of your life? And I'm not talking about you, Rich. Like, I'm talking about people mm -hmm. that always play victim and blame all of these other factors <laughs> outside of themselves. We got to realize that there is no external. There is no outside. Like, honestly, the planets and everything, the gods and all of that, they, they tell us that all of that is inside of us, right? Mm -hmm. We are the universe experiences, experiencing itself as an individual, but it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. And as long as we're in this illusion, we have to abide by certain rules and laws. I'm, I'm asking everybody this question that comes on my channel because it's such an important topic in the world right now and that's artificial intelligence as a bruja as a black magician mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence <laughs> so um have you seen the latest matrix the new the newest one when that came out like two years ago no if it came out two years ago i didn't see it no maybe it was two, or last year one of these i think it was last year it came out but mm -hmm. it actually talked a little bit about that and it, a lot of people said that the movie sucked but mm -hmm. they missed the message Mm. So um, basically in the movie, they were basically talking about how um, things are going to be shifting from, how can I put this? Things are going to be shifting from, okay, in the Matrix, you see how they were saying that technology is going to try to <clears throat> you know, destroy us. But what we're really supposed to do, I feel like what's happening is that we're going to start to utilize technology to help us, right? Like uh, AI to help us. I mm. think that it can either go left or it can go right. Mm. And tech, there's a really good book called um, Time in a Technosphere. And it talks about how we're, humanity is actually in a demise because 
the technology has become more advanced than the human consciousness or our spiritual consciousness. And I feel as though if our spiritual consciousness can catch up to the level that AI is developing, we can actually utilize AI to assist us in all types of new inventions to, um, to help the world, like creating free energy, creating, <laughs> um, they're supposed to have med beds, like where people could just lay on a bed and like they automatically like they're healed. There was a movie about that called Elysium. Um, mm. I think that's why you say it, Elysium, E-L-Y-S-I-U-M, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it talked about that, like in a futuristic society that AI will be used to assist us. But only time will tell. Indeed, time indeed. Tell. But some people say that AI is actually our star family tapping into us through technology to give us yeah. the DNA codes and activations. And I do believe that. Um, especially if you get like that ringing in the ear, the buzzing, like any, do you ever feel like that rich? Like get the ringing in the ear, the vibe, the vibrations at night. Oh yeah. I, I remember I, I said that on my channel like years ago and somebody kept emailing me. They was like, brother, you got tonight. What do you call it? Tinnitus or something? Tinnitus. Tinnitus. And they was like, you got to go check it out. I'm, in my mind, I'm like, nah, nigga, it's not that. And I stopped <laughs> talking about it. But then post COVID, a lot of people are reporting the ringing. So I'm like, okay, okay, it's not just me, but that's definitely something that is affecting people like all over right now. Everybody's talking about the ringing. But then I'm a little cautious of that too, because in the Emerald Tablets by Jehudi or Thav, he talks about the ringing in the air, but he says that beware of the ringing in the air because he's saying that you got to run away from that because it's actually like low vibrations or low vibrational entities that's trying to like um, kind of harm you or control your mind. I don't I heard, know. I heard I heard I heard that also. Uh, Brother <laughs> Yosef says something similar to that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I, I, I hear, you know, like I said, um, um, you know, I, I hear a lot of perspectives and I appreciate everybody experience. But I understand how individual this this experience is and how different it is because it's a hologram. So things could be different for everybody. So but I, I listen, I keep open mind and I listen to a lot of things. People. What say. do you think, Rich, about AI? What Is about AI? Yeah. Oh, like, I think. What do you think about AI? I think um, I look at it like a gun. It could be used. Mm. It could be used for good or bad. And I think that, like when the guns came around, a lot of the spiritualists, when the guns first came around, they was like, "No, no, we don't, we don't need guns." And then they got wiped out with the guns with the white man with his savage mm. shit. So I think that it's happening again with AI. We're like, "No, no, we don't need AI." And then you gonna watch these 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 tycoons and these white dudes come with this AI and just shake shit up. So I think that we need to. Learn about AI and learn how to use it for our benefit personally. But it's going to be used for good and bad, just like a gun. It's going to be used as a gun. A lot of good and bad. It's not, you know, either or. It depends on the user. That's how mm. it's mm -hmm. <laughs> Just yeah. like magic, right? Magic. Yeah, yeah, same thing. It's it's like just... a lot of a lot of things with life is, is good or bad. You know, mm -hmm. money, you can use money for good to help somebody, or you can use money to oppress somebody. So it's, you know, we, we find that a lot in life. I want to I want to ask you about this, Kanji Queen. Now, we come from the era of, you know, a community, you know, of melanated people mm -hmm. where prop most of us, before we got into the magic and the spirituality and the cult, you know, we first got introduced to the pro-black information. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, I'm very, you know, pro-black. I'm not, not to say that I'm not pro-black. You know, my mother introduced me to the, um, uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X when I was young. As you get older, you get into the magic. And you start to have different perspectives on different things. What I want to ask you is, do you feel as though being pro-black may hurt you doing magic? And I say that because I remember two years ago, a white lady gave me advice. I was at an expo. I said this before. And this white lady, she looked like she was like a Kim Kardashian looking, well, like a gypsy looking woman. And she gave me some advice. And I was like, yeah, all right, OK. And her advice rung out that whole year. It was like the theme of my year that year. And I was like. Damn, that lady was on point. I was like, you know, I can't look at somebody just because of how they look and think they're not as tapped in as me. They may be tapped in even more. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So my question is, with being pro-black, coming from black consciousness, um, John Henry Clark, uh, Ivan Van Sertima, uh, you know, the, all the greats, do you think that may hinder our magic sometimes? Yes. Okay, I think that, okay, let me put it this way. I think that when you are only stuck in the physical, 
you're limiting yourself because once again, we got to realize like, okay, maybe, you know, you might have, you might be melanated or black or brown in this lifetime and this physical body, but where was your spirit or your soul, you know, before? You probably was in a white man's body, an Asian woman's body, like, you know, anybody's body. So, you know, I really think that if we all come from the same source, source energy, um, having hate towards somebody is very low vibrational. Like, you could be indifferent to them. It doesn't mean that, you know, and also not all skin folk is kin folk, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, once again, like, I, really, I think it really all depends on, like, a person's heart and their energy because, you know... I've met some people who don't look like me who, you know, have really good energy. I've met some people who look like me who have terrible energy, you know, like I and I mess like at the end of the day, I really feel like people are going to do whatever they want to do. I can't tell somebody, you know, um, whether they should be pro black, um, anti white, pro white, black, whatever, like it's their choice. But when it comes to me, like I, I don't close myself off to just one particular color spectrum of people because I travel the world. Like I'm learning about all of these different spiritual, um, spiritual cultures and spiritual practices. And I think because I travel so much, it's open in my mind where I'm not just mm. stuck in one place. Cause I did start off in my journey, like pro black, Afro, all of that. Right. Um, but once again, like I evolved, I've grown. And I think that when I started talking to like my star families, talking to like higher conscious beings, they told me like I have to get out of that because I'm limiting myself. And that's just my journey. Because somebody well, they told you that. Journey, they told you that. Me. They told me that. Yeah. Mm. They told me that. So that's why I've opened up, you know, my mm. consciousness. Indeed. When, when you say your star family, uh, is there mm. a particular star system that you're talking about or you're just being in, in general? Like, well, I like I like to preferably communicate with the Syrians. Um, okay. I do like to I do like to communicate to different star systems. And like when I do readings for people, like I do tap into like their star family or their ancestral family because we have family that are a physical body. Those are like um, our human family that connect us through blood in this realm on Earth. And then we also have like different bodies or higher levels of consciousness. Where we might have family from distant star systems that we can tap into. And I feel as though that barrier that has been keeping us from communicating with them <clears throat> is breaking. Because I do feel as though there was some type of a force field or some type of shield energy over the earth. Some people believe we're in a dome. Um, I'm not necessarily saying I believe that, but I do believe that there was something kind of placed over us um, here to kind of keep people in like this kind of sleep spell or right. keep us from tapping into certain higher consciousness. But something happened where that shattered sometime around like 2019, 2020. And that's why they kind of had to keep us inside. They didn't want us going outside. They didn't want us getting these, um, these downloads, these frequencies that was coming in. Some people saying we got two sons now. Some people saying this Nibiru. Like I know it's a whole bunch of talk online, mm -hmm. but what I tell people is, don't listen to YouTubers all the time. Don't listen to what everybody is saying. Like sometimes you got to unplug all that noise, silence all that noise and tap into self. Go into a room, turn off all the electronics, turn off the light, sit in darkness and meditate and see what you get. Tap into your own guides and see mm -hmm. what resonates with you. Indeed. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, and I, you just said you do readings mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people who are the healers of their circle, they do readings, they they help people, they assist people, they, you know, they raise people frequencies. What I want to ask you is while you're helping everybody, do you have someone to go to to help you or to <laughs> help raise your frequency? Or is it because you're the main person, you tap into the unseen realm for that? Like people have people they run to for help. Is it when you're the top healer in your circle, do you go to the unseen realm? How do you rejuvenate your spirit since you're healing and helping so many people? Man, I love your question. This is a Thank great you. question. Thank okay, you. look, so I'm going to be honest. When I first started on my journey, I felt like um, I felt like I had to do everything, right? Like, because yeah. people were coming to me for help. But then I used to always ask myself, like, damn, like, I'm drained now from doing all these yeah. readings, all these rituals. Like, who do I go to to cleanse me? And it's yeah. like, yeah, we could cleanse ourselves. We could heal ourselves. But, you know, 
um, a heart surgeon can't perform surgery on himself. You feel me? So mm. you always have to have somebody out there that <clears throat> probably is a little bit more skilled than you, a little bit more knowledgeable than you that can help you. Cause you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You know, mm. that's kind of what I've learned. You want to kind of have your people around you, um, have your team around you, your tribe around you, people that you can go to that pours back into your cup, especially being like a leader, a spiritual healer, um, an oracle, a spiritualist. Uh, but yeah, I, I do go to I do go to my guides and my ancestors. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll send me people because I'll ask them. I'll be like, listen, you know, I appreciate all of this spiritual help and guidance but i actually need a physical human being right now like i need a physical <laughs> i need a physical person and i could you not rich oh. when i ask for it it comes like it comes like they'll send me a teacher they'll send me a person like i met this amazing woman in mexico and yo she's nasty with the magic like she woke with some powerful ass ancient deity demons all of that down there but she's mad sweet you feel me but like whenever i have issues that's my go-to like i have a whole bunch of different people that I go to, my herbalist, my Reiki person, because I feel like as spiritualists, we have to take care of our body. We got to take care of our mind. Like our mental health is everything, especially if you're an influencer doing this YouTube stuff, Instagram yeah. stuff, like it could get draining. You know, yeah, Rich, it could get yeah. draining. So that's yeah, you got to you gotta have your team of healers and stuff on deck. Mm -hmm. Do you limit your... Um, contact with people like I know some people who do magic they may not want to hug people or some people may mm -hmm. wear gloves because they don't want to shake hands and we're taught that we you know we should embrace hugging increases oxytocin I think mm -hmm. but as a magician are mm -hmm. you more wary about physical contact or are you open to physical contact with other people okay so so I feel like dang like you touching on a lot of stuff that I've been thinking about lately because I'm an empath. Um, I tap in. You and you and you a Virgo. You know, Virgos are like tapped into Mercury. And people don't know, but Mercury is the oracle. Like he's the mm. one that communicates to all of the gods and brings information from the unseen to the scene. Like, mm. but yeah. Uh, what was the question? Sorry, I got sidetracked. Are you limiting your contact with people? Am like, I limiting my contact with people? Um Hugs, touching, shaking hands. You know what? It's interesting because a lot of people have been asking me to come to more, like more live events. But in my spirit, I've been kind of not wanting to do that because I don't know. Like, I feel like because it's so much different energies happening right now in the ethers, it's just mm -hmm. like it's been very intense. Like sometimes after doing a lecture or after doing a live event, it can be very draining because people, you know, want to touch you. They want to mm -hmm. talk to you. They want to. And I love engaging with like my supporters, but it's like sometimes it can be very draining, especially like people that are hurting, people that are, you know, need healing. And because I am an empath, I feel all of that. And mm -hmm. it, it could be so overwhelming. <clears throat> so sometimes what I do is when I start feeling like overwhelmed or burnt out, I literally take like a break, a social media break. Sometimes I might just stay home and cleanse. Um, sometimes I may cover my head. I may wear shades outside. Like I may wear darkened shades, a hoodie or a hat, like just to kind of cover myself up. Mm. Um, yeah, just covering myself up. But no, I don't, I don't really like, um, wear gloves and stuff. If I see my supporters, if I'm like walking outside and somebody notices me, like I do give hugs. I'm mm. not like that unless, unless the person has like really bad vibes then I'll keep my distance. Or like um, Jerry Miller once told me, um, he was like, if you shake somebody's hand or hug somebody, just snap your fingers to disconnect that energy. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. So that helps. Mm -hmm. How Now, this is important for the people out there that um, are healers or that practice magic or have a high position in their circle. Like, you don't have to have a family. When I say this, you don't have to be YouTube famous. You can have a, uh, most of us are the black sheep in our family and we, um, you know, we heal people, we help people. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with, cause this is like a question that a lot of people will need help with. How do you deal with, cause it, it, it goes from compliments to criticism. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with the, like, like Conjure Queen, you stink. Conjure Queen, you nasty. Conjure Queen, you stuck up. When you don't do what the person wants to do, or if you, choose not to hug the person or if you choose not to answer the phone call because mm -hmm. people will call you all day you don't answer the phone so 
Country Queen, you stuck up. You man, you conceded. You changed. You this and that. How does a magician deal with criticism in the modern day in order to keep his vibration high? Because if you fall to the criticism, your vibration is dropping like a motherfucker. Hmm. Oh, she had to drink some water to that. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Come on, come on. I've been drinking water this whole time. I've been hydrating. All I'm right. Uh, how do I handle criticism? Like in the comments and in general, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly, I, they don't really bother me. Like, I feel like they used to bother me back in the day when I first started on my journey. But now I just look at it as engagement. Like, it's like, okay, you engage with my content. Like, you you want to curse me out. You want to call me, like, the N-word. Like, you know, it'd be a lot of racists and stuff up there, too. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we can't make everybody happy. And I yeah. think, you know, I, I kind of grew up as a people pleaser. That's dangerous. And I think, like, that, that need yeah. to please everybody is very draining until, like, I came yeah. to a certain point. Like, even talking to my therapist. Because I do go to therapy. Like, I feel like everybody should go to therapy, especially if you're doing healing, if you're doing shadow work and stuff. Like, you need somebody to be there to talk to, to help you and guide you through the dark night of the soul. And that's how you evolve, right? Um, honestly, being a people pleaser, <clears throat> trying to help everybody, you're not going to help yourself. And I feel like at, at this point in my life, Rich, I'm just learning to be like, yo, if somebody says something, if I can't make them happy, it's like, okay, sorry you feel that way, but what am I supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can't make... I can't make myself accessible to everybody. And you got to also realize, like, you know, you have to have healthy boundaries. And sometimes people are not going to respect your boundaries. But, you know. Mm, boundaries. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, <laughs> you, yes. You gotta, I like that word. You got to enforce them. Like, no matter <laughs> how uncomfortable it makes you. And like I said, as a people's pleaser, learning about boundaries was very uncomfortable for me at first until, mm -hmm. you know, you start doing it more and more and then you start to feel more comfortable with it. Like, no, these are my boundaries. You're going to respect it. For instance, like um, what I don't like is when people have this entitlement, like you're supposed to give them free stuff. Right. Mm. It's like, oh, you're a spiritualist. Why are you charging people for mm -hmm. readings? Oh, you're a spiritualist. Why are you charging people for your class? It's supposed to be free. It's like, listen, I would love to give stuff for free. But unfortunately, we live in this matrix where we have to pay bills and we have to pay, you know, mortgage rent and stuff like that. So, no, we, we can't always give things for free. But then it's like, yo, you wouldn't go to like Macy's or go to Target or go to any of these places and be like, hey, look, can I get this stuff for free? Because they're going to look at you like you're crazy. So why do you do that with your brothers and sisters? Why do you ask for discounts with your brothers and sisters? You feel me? You know, that's 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 a big problem. And um, that's some I learned to ignore that as well. That's something that, you know, <laughs> I had to learn that that's, you know, they don't even understand the concept. We just had a discussion on currency. Mm -hmm. And they don't even understand the energetics behind money. So, you know, that's not our problem. But I, I love what you said. I absolutely love what you said about being a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, yeah, something I think a lot of us have to learn. Um, I want to get to an absolutely magnificent conversation, Conjure Queen. Conj Queen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely magnificent conversation. I want to get to a couple of questions from the chat. Before I do... Yes. Uh, one more time, tell them how to contact you. Anything you got going on? Because we got about three thousand people in the chat, so oh, I wow. want you, yeah, I want them, you to tell them uh, everything you got going on. Okay, so I mean, you guys can find me on Instagram at I am Conjure Queen. Also, um, my website is uh, I am Conjure Queen dot com. <clears throat> I think I could type it in here. Yeah, I am Conjure Queen dot com. And that's where you can find all of my like services. You can find my classes. Um, I do private mentorship. If you guys want to learn about magic, um, and if you you know you want one on one readings, I'm going to start doing my readings again next week because I had took a break. We was talking about taking like hiatuses and stuff from like readings and stuff because yeah. it can't be draining. But I will be back doing my readings again next week. So yeah, and I don't normally announce stuff i normally just send it to people who subscribe to my mailing list so if you want to be on my mailing list um go to i am conjure queen uh, dot com and oh if you guys want to take my classes i am doing a special right now if you put in black magic in all caps on my website for the classes you'll get 20 percent off 
um, for those who are watching this live, right? Black magic, all caps, no spaces. Indeed. I would advise y'all to sign up to them <laughs> classes. Definitely sign up to them classes. Yeah, learn how to tap into your ancestors and all of that. Your cult. Indeed, indeed. Let's let's get to some questions uh, from the family. Give me some good questions. Uh, let's see what's going on with y'all. Give me some questions. Um, you got a you got a um a cash app if they want to donate, Conja Queen. Oh, I do. Um, it's a dollar sign Conja Queen is my cash app. Hold on, let me write. Thank this. you. Hold no on. I think I um I could put it in the no. thingy. Hold on. Yeah, I probably should have gave you my links <laughs> before we went live. It's all good. Yeah. Yo, the chat is going by so fast. Like, yeah. I'm even reading <laughs> this right now. <laughs> what it? Oh wait, I can't add links in your in yours because yeah, they um, it's the it's dollar sign Conja Queen, right? Yeah, I put the link though in there. Yeah, YouTube. Hold up, let me just put this. This is uh, always fun coming on your platform. All right. I just put the sister's cash app on the screen. If you would like to show the sister some love, you can hit up a cash That's app, it. dollar sign, conja queen. Show the sister some love. I mean, I know y'all appreciated this conversation. We, we, it was a flow. I, I keep telling the people in my platform, I like the flow. I like the good flow. It's all about good um, television. Good podcast is all about a flow. Money's flow. Everything's about mm -hmm. flow. Everything. When 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 an artist, when a dude is a good rapper, they say he got a good flow. Mm -hmm. It's always about that flow. So yeah, I love it when I have a good flow with a with a guest. Let's. Um, and you know, it's always a good flow when two New Yorkers come together. Come on. Yeah. You know yeah. <laughs> facts. Facts. <laughs> facts. Facts. Uh, okay, let's get to this question. What is the easiest magic ritual we could practice with quick proof? This this dude want the, the quick way. He want the fast route. Oh, God. God damn. He want to be a millionaire tomorrow. <laughs> Shit. Okay. What's your thoughts on that? What's the fastest ritual to do, he said? Yeah. The, what is the easiest magic ritual we could practice with quick proof? Uh... I don't really like giving that type of advice because I feel like with that mindset, mm -hmm. I knew he was going to say know, that magic doesn't just work. It like don't work that. like that. It don't work like yeah, that. Yeah, like you got to be patient with it because mm -hmm. even when it comes to rituals, <clears throat> like you have to, when you do your ritual, you have to be patient and just know that it's coming. But if you're like you know focused, fixated on it, um, obsessed about it, like where is it right now? Um, you're kind, you're pushing that thing away. Get what I'm saying? So I, I don't know what to tell him. I don't know what type of ritual you're looking for. Like, that's very general. Like, money, love, success. Like, you know. Indeed. No, but definitely. I will say, I mean, if you want to get, if you want to start to get results, I would say, like, do the ancestor money ritual. You'll get ancestor money or Joss paper, and you'll burn it for seven days straight. And on the seventh day, you'll get some type of a sign. Like, it could be somebody might give you money. You might find money on the floor. Your ancestors might come to you in a dream. Um, but that's something I guess I can recommend. I don't think that's really fast for you because you want something tomorrow, <laughs> but try it. Uh, this one is cool. They say, can you send everyone in the chat a quick blessing? <laughs> that's cool. Everybody right. is blessed because y'all in here. We all got good vibes. Indeed, indeed. Um, where do you see the information about aliens leading and will, will we be interacting with physical aliens? <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, I mean, aliens are already here. I mean, some of us in the chat are aliens. Like, I mean, we have alien DNA. Some of us are not even from this planet. So when you say the word alien, um, I think it's, it's subjective. Okay, because I do believe that when you read like, um, when you read the book of Enoch, when you read like these ancient scriptures, they talk about there were two different types of human beings or probably multiple, but there was the original human being that, you know, their chakras and their um, pineal gland and certain parts of the brain was activated. And what happened is um, certain gods didn't want these humans to outsmart them. So what they did was they tried to wipe them out with the great flood, right? Mm. Um, but a lot of these humans were not wiped out. Um, they still had these humans still were they were considered like the gods or they had the the genes of the Nephilim. Um, and these were known as, you know, uh, 
people who, like you said, had the dust of the Titans. Um, mm. And some of us are still alive today. These are the witches, the occultists, the people who have spiritual gifts. Um, there's a reason why some people have spiritual gifts and others don't. Like they may have the gift or they might be um, related to these original humans that were able to tap into like the fairies and tap into the elementals and tap into the infernal spirits and the, the heavenly gods and the Lua and the Netsuru. So if you have these gifts, just understand that you're not fully human. Get me? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, you're probably interacting with a, a alien every day. I mean, I know it. Um, mm. But I would say you can tap into them spiritually. Will the aliens physically come down? I feel like they'll make their presence known to those who they feel are worthy. But do mm. be wary of Project Bluebeam. Mm. Okay. I uh, like this question here. Where is it at? How can you tell the difference between a download and a random thought? Ha <laughs> Oh, okay. Who? That was a really good question. Yeah, um, yeah. Heightened senses. <laughs> I like that. So, okay. The way that I found out that, you know, I was talking to my guides or they were talking to me versus it was my own thought. I think when you start to... When you start to tap more into yourself, like learning who you are, gaining knowledge of self, right? Um, you'll start to understand what your inner voice sounds like. And it's very important that you learn your own inner voice. So mm. that way, you know, if you hear an outside voice coming in, you can be very cautious of it because that's also how black magic or um, offensive magic works. And I talk about this in my protection class, my um, protection and defensive magic class on how to discern between like outside thoughts, like somebody who's trying to plant evil thoughts in your head. Cause it mm -hmm. could be somebody doing a, a ritual on you and they're subconsciously sending thoughts to you saying like, you know, you ain't shit. Your money's going down the drain. Your business is terrible. And next thing you know, you're thinking these thoughts like, oh my God, I feel like I don't want to do this business anymore. Oh my God, I feel like I'm not worthy. Oh my God, I'm ugly. Like all of this stuff. But you never had these thoughts before. So when you start being conscious of, wait a minute, hold on. Where's these thoughts coming from? Why are they in my head right now? Like you got to stop that right there before that seed starts to grow. Because I feel like the mind is a garden. And you have to be wary of the seeds, like whatever you plant, because if those seeds manifest and they're rotten fruit, then guess what's going to happen? Get me? Like your whole mm -hmm. mind is being affected. That's how you get affected by the curse. So to be to answer your question, heightened senses, learn your inner voice first, and then that way you'll know like if it's an outside voice coming in. Do more meditations, and even get into journaling too. I absolutely love that answer. I I I I I agree hundred percent. I didn't know how to how to articulate that, but learning your inner voice, learning how your inner voice sounds, how it feels mm -hmm. when it talks to you, all that is definitely important. Yes, indeed. Let's get to the next question. This is from a sister. She wants to know how can women tap into their Juno or genius? Ah, Slayly Kiny. Um, interesting question. Okay, so. The way that you tap into your genie or your genius is your genie or your genius is like your higher self, right? Like, and it kind of goes back into the, the question that the previous person asked about, like, understanding your inner voice, right. understanding right. your higher self. Um, you have to do more meditations. And also what you can do is you can light a white candle and you can make an altar for yourself. Um, you can make an altar for yourself. You have a picture of yourself. And you're going to also have a candle. You're going to have a cup or a goblet um, of liquid. It could be water. It could be juice. It could be wine, alcohol, whatever. You're going to have something that represents earth. Because you're going to have all of the elements, right? The fire is the candle. The um, the water or the, the cup is the water. You're going to have your incense going. Um, and then you're going to have something that represents earth, like crystals, your favorite crystals or whatever like that on it and you're going to create an altar for yourself and you're going to work this altar as often as you want right you can work it once i would say work it every day if you can mm -hmm. and the more that you start to work with this <clears throat> altar that you build with yourself the more you're going to start to connect with your juno or your genius okay and i talk about this too like a lot of this stuff you guys are asking great questions a lot of this stuff i go into detail in my classes that i have um and the 
the spiritism and mediumship class, I talk about how to tap into like your higher self, your Juno and your genius and how to work with these spirits. So that way you can get real results. Because when we do magic, you know, there's some people who are root workers, which means that they just work the root, like the herbs and stuff like that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to tap into higher consciousness or higher elements and energies. Get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you want to sway, if you really want to tap into like that higher magic, you got to tap into your Juno, sis. Tap into your Juno because what it's going to do is it's going to unlock so much stuff in you. Like this is how people become like um, multimillionaires and create mm. all these big businesses. Like they tap into their genius and their Juno. And that's why nobody's doing what they doing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do they access your classes again? What, what was the oh, website? Oh yeah, uh, the class is on my website. Um, Iamconjurequeen.com. Iamconjurequeen.com. The same thing as my 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 um at my handle at Iamconjurequeen. Mm -hmm. Iamconjurequeen.com, and then they'll just see the link. It'll so it'll say classes. They'll click on that, and it'll go right to the divine the divinity academy the Divine Academy, and it has all of my classes listed. And once again, if you guys want the discounts on the classes, <clears> the code <throat> is Black Magic, all caps, and it's a magic with a K. Mm. Okay. So yeah, Black Magic, B-L-A-C-K-M-A-G-I-C-K, all caps, no spaces. Um, That's the coupon code. And it, the coupon code ends on Sunday. So you guys right. got the weekend. All right, got the whole weekend, family. Mm -hmm. Let's... The next question is, is there a way to not reincarnate back here on Earth? Some don't want to walk into the light when passing. Mm. Okay. So honestly, I feel as though if you don't want to incarnate back into this world, uh, you're going to have to do the work to understand the, the spiritual world. Like you need to get into necromancy. Because when you get into necromancy, you can start to talk to the dead and they'll tell you what it's like on the other side. And they'll tell you how to navigate into that. Like the Book of the Dead, the ancient Kemites of the Egyptians like talked about this. Side. It's feedback. You hear that? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to okay. pin your website at the top. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you have to... You have to learn, you have to tap into the muertos or the dead or the spirits that's in the underworld. And the more you start to get comfortable with doing that, um, the more you'll understand the spiritual realm. And then you have to make a conscious, uh, you have to make a conscious effort or like um, a statement that says, I've learned everything that I need to learn in this lifetime. I've experienced everything that I need to experience. I have no reason to come back here. Like it has to be an agreement that you make. And you have to be aware. So it's kind of back to what Brother Rich was saying before about like, you know, um, we create our reality with our mind. Like if a person believes like, you know, there is no God, there is no hell or heaven, like nothing, there's no divine anything. And they're atheists and they'd be like, you know what, when I die, um, this is going to be blackness. Then that's what, that's what it's going to be for them, blackness. But if you believe that you don't want to come back here and you're saying, I am not coming back here, guess what? Like you created that reality for yourself. You won't, but you should have a destination. Where do you want to go? Mm. That's the question you need to ask mm. yourself. What is after this? Mm. I gotta, uh, I'm, I gotta get to these super chat. I'll be missing these super chat questions sometime, family. I'm not going to miss them. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting one. Is the letter D a negative letter? Cause I find so many words are connected. Let's see what dead devil demon. Uh, shit, what else is connected with the letter D? Um, wait a minute, devious. It's a letter D, a negative. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Wow, okay. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, D depression. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. My mind was kind of in the gutter just now. Is the letter D a negative letter because I find so many words are connected? I, I mean. <laughs> Damn. I don't think so. but, but it's also divine. So yeah, the people say delightful. So I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I never heard that question. So genius. I don't. I don't really know how to answer that. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think D is is negative. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't believe I don't. in good and bad. Uh, okay. Let's get to the next super chat question. Peace, goddess. Can you give some pointers to those who know they are powerful 
but struggle with imposter syndrome. Thank you. What's that imposter? What? Oh, uh, yeah. Imposter, uh, imposter syndrome is like when you when you doubt yourself. When let's say like you you have a, <laughs> a big platform or you're successful, you're thriving. Um, yeah. You tend to doubt yourself. You'd be like, oh, my God, like, you know, do I really deserve this? Like, you know, am I really like that special? Am I really mm. smart? You know, mm. like it, something like that. Like you doubt yourself a lot. And I feel like, you know. I think a lot of people go through that. You know, people mm -hmm. just don't mm -hmm. admit it. A whole um, lot more, yeah. I've right? gone through that. I've gone through that. Right? I've gone through that. You know, like yeah. I go through, I, I've gone through that. But now, you know, you got to just say positive affirmations to yourself. Like, yo, I'm popping. Like, I worked my ass off. I deserve everything that I have right now. Everything that I have, everything that I went through, everything that's coming my way. Like, I manifested that. Like, you got to mm. have that. Like, I think sometimes a lot of us could be too humble. Like, I think sometimes it's okay to own own up to your shit. It's like, yo, you mm. work hard. This is you. Like, yo, deserve it. Like, you worked hard. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, sis. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. Real quick, Conch Queen. I went through that. Uh, I remember when I was, like, probably, like, around 22. I, I manifested a big bag of money, and I had a lot of money. And I immediately started feeling guilty and just thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And the mindset just destroyed my whole, all my finances went broke again. Just, mm -hmm. it just, cause I, I felt so bad and felt so like, I don't know, negative about having a lot of money that I kind of like self-sabotage myself. And from that point, I learned, I learned from experience. That's what I'm trying to say. So ascendant goddess here, we are, that, that's a big one. And we go through that a lot of us. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Just keep talking, keep speaking good words into yourself. That's the only thing I can say. Like, I feel like if you don't, if you mm -hmm. don't, if you don't program your own mind, then it's empty. And then it's open for other people or social media to plant things in your mind. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? All right. Uh, okay. Next question is, why do spiritual people struggle with a myriad of attacks, disease, depression, part of karma, or is it their real attacks being put on the person? Okay. Okay. Excellent question, um, Nassim. Okay. So, Nassim, let me answer that for you. A lot of the times when spiritual people are stepping into this path, you got to realize, like, a lot of us been attacked since we was kids. OK, mm -hmm. because there's entities mm -hmm. on the spiritual realm who, nest, who know who we are and they don't want us to grow into our full potential. Get me. And honestly, when you're going into the spiritual path, you got to it's your responsibility to constantly be up to par with your spiritual maintenance. Like one of the things I tell all of my clients, all of my students is like, yo, keep your spiritual protection up. Do your spiritual cleanses, right? Like for those who's watching this right now, if you want a nice, easy spiritual cleanse, what you can do is you can go in your kitchen cabinet, get you some salt, okay, get you some baking soda, and you can just mix that up together, probably a little bit of coconut milk, and take a bath with that, and that's going to cleanse your energy and make you feel light, okay? Now, that's a light cleanse, but if you got like brujeria or some dark shit on you, you're going to need something stronger. You might need mm. to contact me for that. Wow. Um, next question. Conjure Queen, what's your opinion on sleep paralysis? I get this a lot. Started at 11 years old. Mm, Alchemist Star. Excellent question. Um, so sleep paralysis. I used to get that a lot when I was a kid and I didn't know what the hell it was. I just remember one day I was laying down and it was like something was holding me down. I couldn't run. I couldn't scream for my mom. Like I felt helpless. Like, it's one of the scariest feelings I ever had. Mm -hmm. And I remember running to my grandmother and I was like, grandma, like, you know, there was something that was holding me down. And she just told me, she was like, listen, what you do is you say Psalm 23, because that was the hag right in you. And I'm like, what hag? And she, supposedly they have this saying that, you know, there's a witch that likes to, you know, try to suck the souls of children or like to, you know, mess with children. Um, and that's the force that you're feeling, like them holding you down, them trying to suck your soul and snatch you. Because they do have um, body snatchers. Uh, we always hear, side note, I think that's the reason for like crib deaths. Like we always mm. hear about people who are seriously dying. Um, for those who are spiritual, and I was just having this conversation with my homeboy like a week ago, 
where we had similar situations where he used to tell me like when he was a kid, like he would, things would like try to grab him, like shadow people would try to pull him or grab him. Um, but he like would fight it off. And I'm like, yo, I had similar situations. And if anybody else has situations like that, like drop it in the comments, drop it in the live, because I feel like a lot of spiritual people have similar occurrences, like sleep paralysis and stuff like that. But what you could do, Alchemist Star, is um, if that happens again, you can say Psalm 23. Now, like I said, for those who may not feel comfortable with it, they, like, they may be like, oh, you know, isn't that Christian? Isn't that in the Bible? The Bible is a grimoire. <laughs> the Bible is full. What, what does that word mean for those who don't know? Oh, grimoire. yeah. So a grimoire is a spell book. It's mm -hmm. a spell book. Like, uh, we got to realize, like, King, King James was studying demonology. Like, he wrote a whole book about it. Right? Like, that's why I'm like, yo, a, a lot of these religions, people don't realize, like, it come from, like, mystical systems. And they just took, like, the exoteric part of it. Um, which is the, you know, the unhidden stuff and gave it to people and threw in lies in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, say yeah. that Psalm 23, do a little cleanse, Alchemist Star, if you still having those, and they'll make the hat go away. Or for those who have kids, what you can do, and I have a video talking about this, you'll get like an egg. You'll put an egg inside of a stocking and you'll hammer it to the door where the baby sleeps. So that way, like, no evil spirits will come and mess with that baby. You got to hammer it to the door. Especially mm. if your baby is crying a lot at night, it could be spirits fucking with your child. So make sure you protect them and put like a glass of water with camphor under the bed or a knife, a sharp knife under the baby's cradle so nothing can snatch a baby's soul or, you know, have unexpected crib deaths. All right. Let's get to the mm. next question. When you think about someone you haven't seen in years and they randomly bump into and, and you randomly bump into them. Is that a form of summoning or manifestation? <laughs> uh, I do believe that if you have um, if you have really powerful energy, I do feel like people can sense your energy thinking about them. Like you are summoning them. You're pulling their energy to you. Um, so, yeah, in a way you are summoning them, um, Bugin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you focus hard enough. And that's why I think, too, like you got to be careful when like um, – Let's say for those who masturbate, right? Like you might be thinking about a person while you're masturbating, visualizing, like you're actually doing a love spell, if you notice or not. Like when you release mm. that orgasm while you're thinking about that person, and I'm not saying this so you guys can do it, I'm saying this <laughs> to bring awareness that, you know, you can be tying that person to you or making that person see you in a lustful way or in a loving way, because that's the energy that you're projecting in that orgasm because the orgasm is very powerful don't be wasting your orgasms okay if you're going to be using your orgasms you might as well manifest with it indeed somebody asked and i missed that question somebody asked earlier um i missed that question they want to know what what were your thoughts on sex magic oh i so love that, sex magic yeah. I, I mean that's my forte i love talking about that um I think that more people should get into it. I think that, you know, sex is very sacred, it's powerful, and it shouldn't be wasted. Um, <clears throat> you know, when it comes to sex magic, you know, men can utilize their semen, women can utilize their menstrual blood. And this is what we talk about again, like in dark magic, like this is what I talk about when I do my rituals. Like um, when I do my rituals, when I do my classes, like I talk about <laughs> working with bodily fluids and our ancestors work with blood and like, you know, sacrificing chickens and stuff like that, because they knew that these essence, these essences, is that a word? Essences. Um, they mm. had power. They had ashe. So yeah, like sex magic, you can manifest some shit with, with sex magic. You ever, um, I remember when I was, when I first got into this and I seen, uh, rest in power to the brother Azazel. He mm -hmm. was talking about drinking menstrual blood, and I was like, "Oh, this nigga taking it too far." I said, "Oh my god!" This nigga. I was like, "Oh my goodness!" You ever, you ever heard of that? What's your thoughts on that? Drinking menstrual blood. I mean, well, should I say this? Good guy. This is this. Is I know. I know. Here. I'm thinking though. Yeah, I mean. Good. Listen, ladies, be careful, okay? Like, okay, look, we already said that if a woman puts a period blood in the spaghetti and a man eats it, like, you know, he'll love you forever, right? Like, mm -hmm. it'll bind that man to you. But be careful because it can also make him crazy. Like, we hear about, like, those fatal attractions. Like, that's that. Um, 
But you also got to be careful if a man is like very gung ho about drinking a menstrual blood. Like I remember one time it was this guy, um, you know, he was like, I was talking to this guy and I told him like I was on my cycle and he was like, oh, I don't care. I want you to sit on my face and like, look, drink. I want to drink your blood. I'm a vampire, baby. And I'm like, what the hell? So I knew he was a magician. I'm like, okay, no, you trying to take my power. And and if, if a man is a is a male witch or a warlock, a brujo, if he drinks your blood with the intention of like sucking your power, like he can also drain you of your life force and take your power from you. So mm. be very cautious, ladies. Okay. And with the men too. Um, since we're talking about consuming, consuming fluids, um, if a woman can also suck a guy's life force from him. Um, by stealing his semen, by swallowing his semen with the intention of draining him. So like he might feel like a zombie, you know, like he might find all his all his luck drained from him. Like she can suck the life out of him literally. <laughs> wow. wow. So, that was that, that that was a lot. Yeah, that, be careful with these with yeah. these witches. People be like, oh yeah, you know, I want a witch so bad. I wanna, you know, they want a warlock so bad, but then until they bind you, then it's a whole nother story. All right, let's get to <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. the next question. Let me see. Uh, I can't find it. But they do hold on before we get off track. They do have a um, I think Alistair Crowley talked about it. Like they have a drink where um, like a spiritual drink where a man mixes his semen and a woman puts the her blood like in a chalice and like they'll mix it with some type of a fruit juice. And drink it. And what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to enhance their magical power. But you only mm. do this with somebody that you really trust. You know, mm. y'all both get tested and stuff like that. Um, but I heard that it has powerful effects. What's your thoughts on like soulmates or twin flames? You think that's real? Some people think it's real. Some people think it's not. Like imagine if they get together and do sex magic or just do magic, period. Like that's, that's that shit is like Neo and Trinity and shit. Yeah. That's a, that's some next level shit. I think that that's what I meant. Like, you know, make sure you do it with somebody that you're serious about. You're not going to do it with some random, like if you drink their blood or they semen. But um, I think <clears throat> that I believe that we choose who we want our our partner to be like we can have all types of soulmates like your mother could be a soulmate your, your pet could be a soulmate you know like there's different soulmates i don't really buy into the whole like um soulmate twin flame like those are labels to understand things so from what i understand uh anybody can have soulmates we have several soulmates it's people that we came into like our soul family tribe in this lifetime then we have our karmic relationship, which is like the hardest relationship we'll ever go through. And then we'll have the karmic relationship right before we find our quote unquote twin flame or the person that's meant to help us and we're supposed to be with in this journey. So I've, so I've been told. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there is no such thing as the one. There's too many people out here in this mm -hmm. world, you know, like, and, and what's the odds of the one, your one being in the same city, country, state as you, right? Like, I don't know. I think we choose our partners. Mm. Let's get to this next question. What advice would you give those who misuse their gifts of the spirit? Okay. Mm. If they misuse it? I mean, yeah, what, yeah. what do you mean by, I guess, like, if they tell me what they mean by misuse, does the person know that they're misusing it? Maybe they don't know what they're doing. Are they intentionally using it to harm others? I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like um, there is no good, there is no bad. There is just like, a, there is karma as far as you are responsible for the actions that you take, right? Like um, if you do something that is not justified, then the universe likes to balance things out. It doesn't like things to be in balance. So it'll find a way to correct that. Oh my God, there was a movie about that. Um, if I remember before this live is over, I'll I'll put it, I'll shout it out. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, next question. So many questions. I can't answer all the questions tonight. I know this is a real good live. I've been on here longer than what I usually am on here for. So, but I know it's such a good live, but um, I'm going to ask about three more then I'm going to get out of here family, but it's definitely a great live. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Let me ask you this. This is, I think this dude had a good, another question um, that was good. Is it possible for your ancestors to turn on you? From not listening to their advice. <laughs> okay, wow. Nassim, yo, Nassim, you are lit tonight. He asked yeah, Nassim me, lit. Right? Nassim lit. Word. Okay. okay, so Nassim, listen, I don't like to think that your ancestors turn on you. What I look at it is like I said it a little bit earlier in the live. Like whenever I get distracted, or let's say like I'm with somebody. <clears throat> that my ancestors is not fucking with. They're like, yo, I do not like this person for you. But you know me, I'm being hard-headed doing whatever I want to do. So they'll create scenarios or they'll make the relationship hard as hell or like they'll do something to they'll do something to shake me up. Like let's say for instance, we all get distracted. Like this this you this world, this matrix is literally built to distract you. It's your choice to stay focused. Um it's your job to stay focused. So basically, I feel as though your ancestors are just pretty much redirecting you. They're not turning against you because they're on your side. However, I will say not all ancestors are good ancestors. And that's mm. why I always say, like, in my ancestor veneration class, I say, yo, you have to call certain ancestors, not all of them. Because mm. we have some ancestors that probably were like, you know, super religious. And if they see you working with deities and burning candles, they're going to be like, oh, hell no. What is this? They're going to turn all your candles off. They're going to mess with your rituals. Things are going to go left for you. Some of your ancestors probably was pedophiles, rapists, murderers. So those are the ancestors you probably want to burn ancestor money for to heal and cleanse. But you don't really want to work with them, if that makes sense. Mm. this scene. All right. Um, how to com combat know if magic is being used on us? Uh, there's several ways that you can combat that. And it really depends on what type of witchcraft is being sent to you, what type of attack, like if it's evil eye, uh, if somebody poisons you through food, through the feet. Um, I would recommend <laughs> Gary 2P. I would recommend taking my... Um, psychic self-defense class because I give you several exercises, books and resources that will teach you how to protect yourself, but also how to cleanse yourself if those things do come. But if you're like me, if somebody mess with me, I'm not just going to cleanse myself. I'm going to actually reverse it, send that shit back to the ass with a little note that says, here, mm -hmm. you forgot something. So that's what oh, I do. Shit. So wow. you also learn how to reverse. No, you sometimes you got to Sometimes this is what I mean by like the love and light is like they be the ones that be like, don't do offensive magic. But that's just kind of like if somebody walks up to you in the street and they smack the shit out of you, what you want to mm. do? You're going to just mm. walk away. You're going to cry. You're going to tell them how bad it is. Or you're going to fight back. You're going to defend yourself. Right. And mm. I come from a family that says you got to protect yourself and fight back if somebody mess with you. All right. That's that. That's that New York in you. That's that New York. That's, that's that Brooklyn that, energy. Brooklyn. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Okay. Well, they want to know how do you protect yourself from your own black magic backfiring. Oh. Okay. Um. These are really good questions, and and once again, each ritual is different because it depends on the level of the type of the type of magic that you're doing. Right. Like some people like to put a, a ring of salt around them when they do their rituals. Um, some people like to burn red candles or rub it on, clean themselves with a red candle. Like I said, again, um, because we're short on time, I can't really sit here and show you how to do it because there's a certain procedure that you have to do, a certain right that you have to do with candles, incense and stuff. And once again, uh, going back to the class. Psychic self-defense teaches you all about how to protect yourself. Also, how to send shit back to people. Because I feel like it's not enough, it's not enough information online that, well, on YouTube that teaches you how to fight back. It just tells you how to protect yourself because a lot of love and light is tell you not to. But I think, honestly, Rich, I think that um, I think that it was like agents that kind of infiltrated and started telling us not to mm. fight back because we, our ancestors, use black magic to fight our oppressors, and that's how they right, right. they beat slavery. Right, and even right. before the Haitians did it, the Native Americans, the Indians, the Americans here 
did that and they influenced the Haitians, the Gullah Geechee Wars, which everybody mm. kind of wiped out of history. So yeah, I think that we should use our black magic to fight back these oppressors. I think so. I think so. Or, or fight back those who are trying to oppress mm. us, right? Mm. We only oppress if we allow people to. All right. Wow. What a what a what a conversation, y'all. Mm. And this is the last question for the night, y'all. Conjure Queen, they want to know what are your thoughts on blood ritual? Oh, I love blood magic. I love blood magic. I talk a lot about blood magic in my rituals and my classes. Um, I think that more people should work with blood magic. However, I will say that blood magic is very powerful. I think that ladies, if you want to work with blood magic, um, yeah, use your menstrual blood. Men can also use their blood. They can use their woman's menstrual blood. Um, they can use their own blood. Like if people don't want to cut themselves, what I say, you can get those little diabetic pens pinch your finger, use your blood like that, because one drop of blood goes a long way. And understand that blood magic is binding, is very strong. So I'll give you guys a freebie before we go, since we're about to close anyway. What you can do is you'll draw the five-pointed star, <clears throat> right, or the 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 tetra, nom, the te uh, the Tetragrammaton? Tetra Thank you. I always yeah. get tongue-tied. That. Yes. Um, you get that, the five-pointed star. And then what you'll do is like you'll smear your you smear your your blood over mm. it. But you want to mm. write your petition, and then you're gonna write the pair the the tetragrammaton over it. Um, and then you're gonna put your blood over it, and then you're gonna let it dry overnight with the full moon. And then the next following day, the morning, what you're gonna do is you're gonna burn it. And you're gonna cast the ashes to the four winds, and then Oof. literally, it's powerful. <laughs> literally, you'll see that shit <laughs> manifest in one. And one moon, so in a one moon cycle. Okay. And that's just, that's nothing. I'm telling you guys, if you guys want some real powerful rituals, y'all better start signing up for my classes uh, and I, also get some mentorship with me if you want private mentorship. I, so, I didn't know you was into the blood magic like that. Damn. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, thought you, I thought you was just talking about like, um, like cutting a chicken head off or something like that. Oh, I, I, listen, I, you, you talking about blood is powerful. It's a reason why they, they, you know, they tell, they say women shouldn't cook or do stuff like that when they're on a cycle. A woman, um, a, a bleeding woman shouldn't hold um, a baby. A, a bleeding woman shouldn't be around a pregnant woman because she could have a miscarriage. Like, menstrual blood is very, very powerful. Very. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, man. I appreciate this conversation. <laughs> wow. I appreciate what a conversation. being up here. It was definitely a pleasure, Rich. Thank you. No, good, good having you on here again. You're doing your thing. It's good to see you still doing your thing after all these years. Gotcha. Um, like I told you before we got on the show, I was telling you like a lot. For some people, it's just a phase. But for me, Conjure Queen, this is a lifetime commitment. Mm -hmm. And I can see your passion. And, and that's important. And I like that. I can see your passion about what you do and I can see your, your heart involved in what you do and I can feel that some of the things you say and um, that's that's good and I, and I like that I like to see other passionate individuals in this realm so before we get out of here once again could you leave all your information I know I got your website pinned at the top okay. but I know well, tell them about all your classes everything you offer for those some of the, I seen some people like oh I gotta go this <laughs> this may not be everybody's cup of tea if it resonates with you, good. If it doesn't, it's all good as well. Also, but exactly. let the people, if it does, for those who it does resonate with, uh, tell them how they can contact you and everything you got um, that you're offering. Definitely. So once again, like I always say, you know, my energy is not for everybody, and that's okay. But mm -hmm. if you want to learn about the nitty gritty magic, not the pretty love and light stuff, okay? Like, and there's nothing wrong with love and light, but I feel as though if you want to go deeper, if you want to really know how to get real results with your rituals, not hit or miss, then once again, take my classes. My website is IamConjureQueen.com and my at, so my Instagram is at IamConjureQueen. So I'm on Instagram. You can check out my website, which has all my links, like all my social media links um and yeah i have classes i do my mentorships and i'm also going to start doing my readings very soon and my cat is calling me yes <laughs> you hit him right can't, yes. can't, can't be a witch without a cat huh right. gotta, gotta, gotta have a cat <laughs> it's real tight but it's true He's my <laughs> yes oh man once again conjure queen thank you so much coming on the broadcast uh thank, thank you for, for everybody me. who's listening Got a full house tonight. I hope y'all enjoy. I know y'all enjoyed it. I, I appreciate it. all the questions. 
Uh, look forward to having you on here again, Conjure Queen. Definitely Thank do. You. And uh, with that being said, Brother Rich, Conjure Queen, we sign out, family. See y'all next time. Peace. Peace.